God has a place called there. And as long as you stay in that one place called there, he says, there I will supply for you. Even if I have to use ravens, unclean animals, even if I have to use the most greedy animals to bring you what they like eating, but they are going to come and surrender it to you because I will put you, when you stay in that place, I will send you the supply. Do not forget the lessons of trusting in God, the God who supplies to you. The God who has given you from nothing to where you stand. That same God can continue to supply. The resources that he brings to you should never be your place of trust. The book of 1 Kings chapter 17 from verse 1 to 6. These are some of the gems or the lessons that we learned from this prophet uh, Elijah. And, and uh, we learned these uh, gems uh, so that they can change and transform us. And so, and Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, or Ahab. Ahab is at this point the king of Israel. And uh, so he said, this is Elijah as a prophet. He would speak to the kings in Judah and in Israel. And he was a very revered prophet. He was a powerful man. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. And so what he's saying to uh, Ahab here, it's, it's, not, it's not that, you know, it will be three and a half years or three years. He said, until I say so. This is like someone coming and walking up to you and saying this or locking heaven, no rain, until, and putting the key in his pocket and walking away and saying, until I say so. What authority this man, you know, had. This man had authority from God. And he speaks with a lot of power. But as you study the life of Elijah, you discover that it's he's just a man that who knew what God has said. Because God had said, if you disobey me and you worship idols, then the heavens will be brass to you. There will be no rain in the land. And so when he was saying that, he was just declaring and agreeing with God for about what God had said. He was speaking a prophetic word, but that prophetic word was completely what God had said. It was parallel to the word of God, and he was just saying what God had said in his word. So he says here, before whom I stand, there shall be no dew, no rain this year except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. So a brook is a small stream. And so God speaks now to uh, Elijah. Elijah speaks to the, uh, to the king. God says to Elijah, you turn, get away, turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he's telling him that this is uh, what you're going to be enjoying. You're going to be there, and I'm going to send these birds. These are uh, tiny birds. They are black. They are very greedy. They are, they are very, uh, very, very greedy birds. They feed. They eat meat. They also eat sometimes some uh, grains, but they generally eat meat. And these are, uh, and they are also unclean birds. The Bible says that you shall not touch them. You shall not eat them. They were unclean birds. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. So the ravens were coming in the morning and in the evening, they brought him bread and meat. This is a sandwich. I think that's what you call a sandwich, bread and meat. And I think they were just biting on sandwiches and heading down to the brook Cherith. And that is where he was. And uh, he was commanded there to uh, drink water from the brook and also to eat the sandwiches that were coming. He was getting a sandwich in the morning and a sandwich in the evening all. I don't know whether they were separate, but it seems bread and meat. That's what they were having as their diet for every single day. So, but this, in fact, this in the life of uh, Elijah is probably one of the most significant events of his life. God was pulling him to the side and God was taking him down to the brook to prepare him for something. And this was to prepare him for something big that was going to come. 
Because after this period of time when he was going to be hunted down everywhere in the land, he was going to also come back and meet with Ahab and the prophets of Baal, and he was going to call fire from heaven. And after that event, then they were going to chase him down, and that's how he would come and anoint his own successor, Elisha. And so God calls him to the side and takes him uh, down to the brook, and at the brook he starts teaching him lessons, and these lessons are going to prepare him for a ministry that God w wants for his life. And so some of the things that we want to observe from there some of the lessons that you want to observe from God's dealing with men. And it's important for you to understand that the stories we read about men of God and women of God in the scriptures, they are supposed to teach us to know who our God is. What is our God like? How does God deal with people? How does God want us, want us to deal with issues of life? We learn these things by seeing how God dealt with these people, and so that's why it's good to study, to see those lessons, so that those lessons can teach us how to work with our God and how to be powerful in our time and in our day. And so these are the, some of the lessons that we are going to get from there. Uh, number one is very quick, uh, very straightforward, that sometimes God's timing is not, not really our timing. So this excited prophet, has just come and given a prophecy, and he has said there'll be no rain for these three years. Now, and he's sure, he knows there'll be no rain. And so because that word is going to come true, he wants to be there to enjoy and see the word of God coming to pass. He wants to stay around. He, wants, he doesn't want to hide and go somewhere in hiding. He wants to be there. He wants God to protect him and keep him because he's a God who is all-powerful. He wants to be are on the scene, he wants to be there so that he can see what God is going to do. But God had a different plan. And so that when the prophetic word catches on, God wants his man to be away from the scene and he wants him to be there because his timing and our timing are always, almost always not the same. This is Elijah's time. God says, this is not your time. I need you away from Israel. I need you away from the scene because I want to do some things. Because unless you go to that time and place of hiding, unless I deal with you now in this manner, unless I don't bring you to the spotlight at this time when you want to be on the spotlight, you are going to miss the big things that I have for you in the future. God had a mission for Elijah, and that mission was coming to Mount Carmel. Elijah prematurely thinks that this is his time to be around, but God says, go hide, go stay away. Let everybody be talking about Elijah and seeking you, but it's not the time for you to come on the platform. There will be such a time at Mount Carmel, but this is not the time. And many times God's timing is really not our timing. We are so much in a hurry to get to the top, to do this, to go there, to be this and to be famous and to, have, uh, to be at the peak of our career. But sometimes God takes us slowly, step by step. Many times we are in a hurry, and I said the other day here, many times we are in a hurry and God seems to not be in a hurry. Many times God is more concerned at working inside of our lives rather than just bringing us to the platform premature, not well cooked, not well baked. That's not how God wants us. And so sometimes he takes us slowly by slowly and step by step. And I think the wisest of us and among us is the person that is going to wait for God's timing and be willing to go and hide themselves by the place where God wants them to go so that we can be prepared by God for the big things that God has in store for us. This, uh, where he was taken, there was no internet, no TV, just water and ravens and meat and sandwiches. There was no glamour. There was no one calling him a master. There was no servant with him. This is the worst time for him to be in hiding. He wants to be there. He has the fear of missing out. He doesn't want to miss out anything, but God says, this is a time to be away, and this is a time I want you to go in hiding and be a part uh, for me. I just want to say specifically to some of us, maybe this is God's time. God is, God is calling you away from the, you know, social media. God is probably calling you away from all these other platforms. Maybe God is calling you away and just saying, close that down. I need you by the brook. 
cross this down, I need you by the brook, or stop uh, walking with that company, I need you by this brook, or get out from this group that you are following, I need you by the brook. And many times we do not seem to, uh, you know, prefer God's method. Many times we want our way, we want our timing, and we feel like we are going to miss God's timing. Lily, I want you to know that this is the best thing that happened to Elijah because it was preparing him for the things that were coming upon his life here very quickly like you are going to observe. The other thing you see from that story of Elijah is that God's power will work even in our absence. Even when you are not there, even when you are not on the scene, even when you are not physically there to be there for whatever you want to be there for, you know, God is still at work, even when he asks you to step aside. Many times God will come and speak to you specifically and will say, hey, stop doing this, just step aside and leave that to me. When God does that, when God speaks to you to step aside, I want you to know, even when your hands are not on that project, even when your hands and your presence is not there in that meeting that you so much wanted to be involved, even when you are not there, God will still do his work and God is still working. Because even when Elijah was gone, God was still pushing forward his agenda for Israel. God was still working and preparing so that he's going to destroy the prophets of Baal. And together with that, the worship of Baal was going to be abolished because of what God was preparing to do. Elijah doesn't have to be there. Elijah needs to be gone. Because after staying by the brook chariot, God took him and sent him to Zarephath. For a long time, he stayed away from the land. And God was still working using Obadiah and other people to, to take all the prophets that were remaining and hide a hundred of them. God was still using another group of people, 7,000 of them, that were not bowing to idols. God's work was still going on, even when Elijah thought that everyone in Israel had backslidden. And I want you to know that God's power is going to work even in our absence. And where God wants us, if we only go and attend to what God is calling us, God is going to work even when we are not there. And even when we are not in the places where we think that God needs us for his work to be able to go on. God can work without us. But we cannot do anything without him. We cannot do anything without him. But God will do great and mighty things when, sometimes when we are not there on the scene, especially when he asks us to step aside. And so sometimes that's why sometimes people feel like if I leave this group, if I don't, I'm not there in this person's life, if I do not continue in this company, probably their life is going to crumble. And I want you to know if God asks you to step aside and go by the brook chariot and not be there on the scene, maybe it's time for you to be able to do that. The other lesson you find there is that the time you spend by the brook chariot or in that place where God calls you aside, the time you spend there that time is not wasted time. That time is important time. I remember a few years ago, this is 2020, when God closed down the world when, uh, from March, end of March, all the way to the March of the following year, many, many places, uh, things were closed down. There are many businesses that closed down, and a lot of things were closed down, including churches. And that time, those places were closed down, that time was not wasted time. The many, many of your families, many of the things that actually are happening around your life now, they are happening because of what happened and transpired in that time that uh, things were closed down. That time you spent uh, by Brook Chelith, uh, that, that time is not wasted time. So, but I want you to go back and hear these words again. What God says here, uh, to uh, Elijah. This is what he says in verse 2. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And this is what he says, and it will be that you shall drink from the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. You see that word there? That he says, he's making it very specific. He's saying, you go to that place. Go by the brook chariot, because I, if you are there in that place, I will feed you there. 
not in another brook, not by Jordan, which is a bigger river, not by another place. There is a their place that I want you, and when you go to that place, you'll get food. Even if I have to send ravens, you'll be supplied there. You'll eat meat. There'll be bread for you, and there's going to be your sustenance is going to be there as long as you stay on that one location called there that I'm calling you. And so God is saying, my supply for you and my, uh, my, my grace for your life and my sustenance for your life, my provisions for you, my blessing for your life is in one place and that place is called there. If you stay there, you will not lack. If you stay on that spot and that location and that environment and that place and if you position your life there, then you are not going to lack God's supply. And many times we think about uh, geographical locations, but I'm thinking here not of geographical locations, but there's a place that maybe God calls you to. Some of you have been called to a place of holiness, a place of separation for yourself. And God has said, if you separate yourself, and if you keep your life sanctified, you will not lack fees, you're not going to lack su su supplies, you're not going to lack rent, you're not going to, you don't have even to have a big supply, a big paycheck, you don't need all that. But you sanctify yourself and you serve me and you walk in my way and you will never lack food. God has a place called there and as long as you stay in that one place called there, he says there I will supply for you even if I have to use ravens, I have to use unclean animals, even if I have to use the most greedy animals to bring you what they like eating, but they are going to come and surrender it to you because I will put you, when you stay in that place, I will send you the supply. God will send you up to a place. God will call you to holiness and put you in that place called there, and he will supply for you. But many times, many people want to leave from that place and walk away from the place called there and won't go to another place and start calling on God to meet them in that other place because they think in that other place they can actually hustle and find their own means. But I want you to know that there's a place for each one of us that God calls you. And as long as you're in that place called there, you'll always see promotion, you'll always see supply, you'll always see God's blessing, you'll always be able to work with God, but dare move yourself from that place and your supply dries out. And many, many people, People actually have found that their supply has dried out because God has called them to a place and then they move away from that place. God will even sometimes give you a simple command and will say, hey, I want you to every week, I want you to serve in such and such a place every single week. And as long as you do that, God will supply for you. God will send leavens and God will do that for your life. God will speak to you and say, always honor me with a 10% and you never lack. And God actually will command you and God will speak thus. And as long as you stay in that place called there, your supply will always be there. We, God has called us to position ourselves in a certain way in the church. And this church, we position ourselves that way. Whenever we are positioned that way, we never lack God's supply and we never lack a voice in the midst of this place, we never lack a voice. We become the salt of the earth and we are able to preserve our community from destruction or from uh, decay. We are able to remove corruption from our own community as long as we stay in the place called there. And this is where God is telling Elijah, you go to that place. For Elijah, it was by the brook Chelly. You go there and stay there. Once, as long as you stay there, I'll make sure I, I take care of you. I'll make sure you are well supplied. But many times people move. But I want to ask you this evening, what is your place? What is the place called there? Where, what place do you always put yourself in and you enjoy God's supply? Whenever you are in that place, it may not be the most fertile place. It may not look like the, the place of resource. It may not look like it's a place you'll be supplied for, but whenever you are there, you never lack. You need to find your place called there, and you need to take yourself there. As long as Elijah stayed by the brook, there was always a supply from God. When he moved away from there, he, he moved away from there. He went to Zarephath. He moved away from there because again, the voice of the Lord came to him and he said, the brook is dry because of your prophetic word. Now move and go to Zarephath. And he went there and God continued to supply for him even when he went to Zarephath. 
that place called there is one of the lessons that I have learned from this man, Elijah, to always stay in my place, the place called there. For him, it was Brook Cherith, but for me spiritually, there's a way I position my life, there's a way I live my life, and as long as I live my life that way, and I, as long as the ministry is positioned that way, then God always supplies for us, God always takes care of us, God always protects us. We can be in the midst of the biggest challenge or attack from the enemy, it never shakes us because God is always there. And even after some of these fights and battles, God comes and raises a standard for us as a church. You are witnesses what God does, even when it looks like there's, there's no help, no supply, God actually will come and supply for us because we stay and we want to stay in the place called there. Whenever we have been moved by anything from the place called there, then we find things dry up and we start lacking the supply from heaven. Let's stay in the place called there and let's stay there trusting in the Lord. So that time spent by the brook is not wasted time because Elijah learns this lesson that if I stay where God speaks and tells me to stay, even ravens can bring me meat. He, he understands that. He starts, he starts looking around and knowing that this God that I trust in can tell birds to bring me a meal in the morning and in the evening. And he can command just anything. If livers can bring me food, just anything here can come and supply for me. He learns that lesson when he's there. He also learned this lesson. He learned how to trust in God. The ravens brought enough provision for a meal in the morning and in the evening. There were no, never leftovers. He didn't have a fridge there. But in the morning, there was enough. In the evening, there, he learned to trust in God. And so when he was walking down to Zarephath, for, to this widow's house, and he was going there, where he was headed, that's where the center of Baal worship was. Zarephath was the place where they worshiped Baal, and he had challenged uh, Jezebel, who had the prophets of Baal. And so they are looking for him there also. But he goes to the house of uh, this widow, and he goes there with this confidence, that even if this widow doesn't have more than just one meal, Enough flour for one meal. He knew that God would supply in that house for them because he has just come from the brook experience. He knew that in this new place, God is going to supply for us. And that's why he looked at this woman and he said, hey, can you bring me some water? And as she was going, she, he said, can you bring me some bread to eat? And this woman said, I have just enough for me and my son to eat and die. And he said, you just make that for me. And this is what the word of the Lord is. That when you do that, then that bowl will always have flour. The oil will never cease. And then that's what happened. He gave her an encouragement after inviting her to the prophetic word. He gave her an encouragement. And when she brought, there was always bread in that house throughout the days of the drought. And he stayed there with this woman uh, from Zarephath. He learned to trust in God when he stayed in the place where God said, go to the place called there, and there I will supply for you. And let me tell you, brethren, sometimes you look at the supplies that God is sending our way, and sometimes when you start getting a good supply of income, a good supply of money, sometimes we forget the supplier, and we start looking at our resources. And this is what happens. When we start looking at money, however much it is, what you find is that you start having having doubts and fear and anxiety, you start having those. When you move your eyes from Jehovah the giver, and I want to just tell you that do not forget the lessons of trusting in God, the God who supplies to you, the God who has given you from nothing to where you stand. That same God can continue to supply. The resources that he brings to you should never be your place of trust, and you should never put your trust in them. We always put our trust in God who is able to replenish and to give us more. And so even when he supplies to us, we walk humbly with him and we always remind ourselves who the giver is and we always look and put our eyes on him. So we never move from there because he has said, if you stay there in the place of sanctification, in the place of holiness, you stay in that place where you have a relationship with me. If you stay there, 
and you don't go back to your old ways, and you don't go back to your drinking buddies, and you don't go back to where you messed up your life, and you don't go back to your old, uh, you know, old practices. If you do not do that, then I'm going to supply for you. If you honor me and worship me and stay in the place called there, I'm going to make sure that you are well supplied for. That is what he says. And so I want you to know that what that place is, when you find it, stay there. For some of you, God is probably speaking to you, the place called there may be unity in your family. Maybe God is speaking to you as a man, saying get back with finances, doing finances with your wife. And some of you, as husbands, God is saying, get back to doing, you know, what you did in your house, in your family, and get, get, bring peace again in your own household. As a wife, maybe God is saying, bring your resources again in the house. Don't, if, don't move from there because you saw some cash. Go back to the place called there, and I'll supply for you. And even when there is no harvest around you, I'll send even ravens, and they'll come and bring you supply. God is calling you maybe to remember the place called there and to put your trust only in God. This is where Elijah may have learned to hear the still small voice of God. He learned this, God speaks. And when he speaks, it's sometimes a whisper, you can easily miss the voice of God. In the times God has spoken to me big things, and in the times that he has guided my life, sometimes I almost miss it because it comes not in a very amplified dream where it's dramatic and things blowing up and fire and people chasing and stuff like that. No, it's sometimes just a, 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 just a few seconds word or dream that I get and something that I, you can easily ignore. Although it's as clear as day, it's something that you can easily ignore. And I later come to find out that this is the Lord God speaking and with a megaphone, and that still small voice, you can easily miss it, and probably this is a place where Elijah learned that the supply, maybe he just saw a vision, maybe he just saw this word as a whisper, and then he found this is a place where God was already sending, the coordinates were already programmed on these levens, and God was sending food there. He, they, he, he could have easily missed it. And so this is probably where he learned how to hear the still small voice. And so when he goes to the cave and he starts seeing thunder and lightnings and, and um, loud noises, he still waited for the still small voice. He learned how to hear the voice of God. And here he learned that God shows you only one step God never gives you the whole path all the way to the end. He just tells you go to the brook and stay there in the brook. He doesn't show you that you are going to move from here, then go to Mount Carmel, and then from there you are going to go to all these places. He doesn't show him all that. He just tells, says go to the brook. He doesn't even think the brook will ever dry. He doesn't know Zarephath at this point. God just says, go to the brook. And this is a big lesson for many of us because we are waiting for elaborate things and that's why nowadays we become a generation of chasing down prophets so that prophets can tell us our future. But maybe God is not going to tell you all things that you want to know. God will just give you one word, obey him in the one thing he tells you to do and just do it. When that is done, he'll take you to the next level. Just that one step. Do what he has spoken, and that after you, you do that, God is going to take you to the next level. And this is what Elijah learns here, that he did not know that one day he was going to be carried by chariots of fire into heaven. He was a man like us. He had no idea that he would one day be taken into heaven. He was one like us, but he was given step by step by step he ended up doing big things because he followed God in every step of the way. You, you may not know what you're going to do next year. You may not even know what to do uh, in the summer. But if God has said, do one thing, just obey him and do it. Because when you do what he has asked you to do, he'll open doors, he'll make ways where there, you thought there was no way. God is going to come and open uh, places that you never thought were possible to open for you because he's a good God. And so he learns that, and uh, this is what he learns, that God will feed you and take care of you at the brook, but you have to always trust in God that when he says go to the brook, you have to go there, and he's going to be there, and he's going to supply for you there. The last thing I want to say as a lesson here is that God's methods 
are not our methods. The method God uses with, uh, with us are not the methods that we would prefer. This is what actually he learns. He's a prophet, a very serious uh, prophet. He was a no-nonsense prophet. This man would come and face kings and would declare judgment. Like he comes back to Ahab at some point and declares judgment on the house of Ahab. And um, he, he, he was such a person. But he sees that <laughs> the methods God uses are not the methods we use. Ravens were unclean birds. Ravens are greedy. Actually, Leviticus forbids Israel from dealing with ravens directly, singled out. Ravens are, were birds that were actually very unclean. They are also very tricky and very messy because even when they find a carcass and they are eating that meat from that carcass, they'll even take some of that meat and go hide in rocks. That they are that, that greedy. They will tear out meat from uh, some of these uh, kills in the forest and they will hide those pieces of meat somewhere so that they can come back to them. They are very greedy. But you know God's methods is, he doesn't use the ego. Because if God had used the ego, we would understand. The ego is such a, a majestic bird. It's just, uh, you know, mentioned the eyes, the creatures in heaven, they have the eyes you know, of an ego, the, 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 the imagery of egos is everywhere in the book of Revelation. I want you to understand that God doesn't go with that. God uses a raven here, and that tells you his methods many times are not the methods that we prefer. He uses expect God, and I am saying this here, really try to expect God to do things out of ordinary. If you're thinking that God can only bless you through believers, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that you have limited more than half of what God can use. Because many times, God is going to use other people. You don't prefer other people to bring blessing to your life. God is going to use uh, people that you don't prefer to be around to bring contracts your way. If you are expecting contracts to only people that are saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Sometimes they are too focused on themselves. They have no time to help a brother. But God will use that event to be a blessing to your life. God, you go to a place and God will take your hand using somebody that is not even born again. That is, you know, all kind of, he can even, you know, be smelling pot. And this person is the one that is going to end up being helpful to you. And he will help you to the end. Wanting nothing back. Because God is going to use them. And I pray that expect God to do some things out of the ordinary. Expect God to use methods that you ha he has not used before in your life. And expect God to use people that he has not used before in your life. The God of the living will help, will send you help. And when he sends you help through a living, then you have no question that this is God, because ravens are not doing that out of their goodwill. They can only do that because God has commanded them. And I just want to say to somebody here tonight that maybe you have limited God in some areas of your life. I want you to know that there's a God who commands the raven, and that God is going to command the raven in your life, and those ravens are going to bring blessing your way. And that's my prayer for you. Many of you that are trusting God for big things, my prayer for you tonight is that the hand of God will be stretched over your life, and as you stay in on the brook cherith, you are going to start seeing a resource come back in your life and a supply come back in your life. And God who sent you there and God who has met you by the brook there before, that God is going to bring a supply and will supply again for your life. Do not be anxious for anything. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 25, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink. Not about your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? This is the Lord Jesus himself just telling us, don't be anxious about life. And I speak that in the name of Jesus Christ. This week, you are going to see God's hand upon your life. 
as God uses something that is not usual, that is not ordinary, that is not normal. God using methods and people and ways to bring blessing in your life and to bring a supply in your life. And God is going to do that because he's God and he's the God of the living and he's going to do that in your life. And my prayer and my blessing to you tonight is that that word is going to become true in your own life like it was true in Elijah that God will find you in this day and God is going to supply for you and God will bring blessing and supply upon your life. Let's pray together as we finish our study. Father, thank you so much. I give you praise. I give you honor and glory. As you supply for the needs of your people, King of glory, I pray that none will be forgotten. Many of us that have listened to this word tonight, I pray that you're going to remind us where our brook chariot is. And Father, where you have commanded us that you command the ravens to supply for us there. May we find that place, God, there. If we are backslidden and walked away from that place, Father, cause us to go back to it so that there we can be able to meet with you and there you can meet with us. We honor you, we bless you, and we worship you. Father, tonight I pray for those among us that are in need, those that are having situations in their lives where they are needing a supply from heaven and some are urgent, King of glory, I pray that you are going to turn things around. And this night you are going to answer and Father, you are going to meet these brethren at the point of their need. King of glory, open a big door for someone that is needing a supply, some that, that, that is having a big dream uh, about their life. King of glory, may they have a breakthrough. May this be the time that the breakthrough is coming in their life. And I pray that you are going to do this, that you may glorify yourself. We give you praise and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, believing and trusting. Amen. May the Lord bless you.